Hey everyone, this is Alex from WarnOffKeys.com, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own buttons such as this one using Discord.js version 13. Now, real quick, I want to mention that knowing JavaScript is required to follow this video and this entire series. If you don't know JavaScript, don't worry. You can scroll down to the description of this video, and at the top, you'll see JavaScript course. There was an hour-long crash course here on YouTube, which you can right-click and open this in a new tab, so you can watch that after you're done with this video. So going into my commands folder, I'm going to make a new command called test.ts. And of course, if you're using JavaScript, you would use .js instead. But because I'm using TypeScript, I'm going to use .ts. Within here, we have to export our own object. Within TypeScript, that would be export default object. Within JavaScript, that would be module.exports equals an object. So I'm using TypeScript. I'll go ahead and use this. And one advantage of TypeScript is we get to specify what type of object this is. So I can say as I command, which is something that's part of one of keys commands. So from here, I now have additional IntelliSense as well as autocomplete to let me know what options I have within this object. So I can say a category is testing and a description is testing. And of course, with a real command, you'd want this to be more meaningful names. I then want to specify slash is true. This will create a slash command for us. And I also want to make sure that the slash command is only registered to our test servers, which are specified right here. I can say test only is true. And then I can add in my callback, which will be a function that is invoked every single time a user actually runs this command. I'm going to make this asynchronous because I do plan on using await within this callback. And within the parameters here, I'm going to destructure a few pieces of information. The first of which will be our interaction. And I'm actually going to rename this into a message interaction. So here I can say message interaction. And the reason why I'm doing this is because we will be gaining access to button interactions within this function. And so I want to make it very clear which interaction we're using. And then we we'll also want to gain access to the channel and we'll be using this later on. So now the goal is to actually send a couple buttons. We can start off by creating a row which will have individual buttons on it. So I can say const row equals new message action row. And within here, we can chain together add components. Now, within here, we can pass in our own component. In this case, we want a message button. So I can say new message button. I can use control space to automatically import this. And this acts similar to an embed, if you're familiar with those, where we can chain together multiple methods in order to create the functionality we want. Most important one is set custom ID. This is going to be your own name for your button behind the scenes within your code, so you can detect which button the user clicked on. Now let's go ahead and have a hypothetical example where we're creating a ban command and we're asking the user if they're sure they want to ban that user. Well, in this case, I can say ban underscore yes as the custom ID. And we have other options as well, such as set disabled, which is false by default, but this will make it so the button cannot be used. We have set emoji, which takes in a string. And if you're on Windows, you can use the Windows key colon at the same time to bring up this menu. I'm gonna add in a hammer emoji. And then other options we have is set label which is going to be the actual name that we're using on our button. So I can say confirm, and then we can set a style. Now the style can be certain strings, and on the screen now, you should see an image of what each of these should look like. So in the future, we may gain access to more colors or the ability to specify our own hex colors, but for now, we just are limited to these five. And because this is a confirmation, I want to set this to success so it looks like it's green. Now we can chain these together and add in multiple message buttons. So I can say add components, and pass in another message button. Within here, I'll set a custom ID of ban underscore no. In this case, I'll set no emoji. I'm gonna set a label as cancel, and I'll set a style as danger because that means it's red. Now, one thing to keep in mind is there is an extra method here, which is set URL. This method has some special rules to it, which I will cover later on in this video. So now that we have this entire row, Let's go ahead and reply to our interaction using this. So I can say await message interaction dot reply. We can pass it an object. And within here, there's two properties we need to provide. The first one is our content, which is a string. Continuing with the ban confirmation example, I can say, are you sure? I can then pass in components, which will be an array of each individual row. So we'll pass in the row object that we created here. And now if I save this, I can go up to terminal and make a new terminal here. I can then run my bot with npm run dev. And now if we go into discord, I can do forward slash test. 
and it's going to say, are you sure? With confirm and cancel. So now if I click on one of these, just like slash commands, we have up to three seconds to reply. Otherwise, it'll say the interaction failed. So we'll cover how to listen to these, but real quick, I want to show you how you're going to actually add in your own links using the set URL method. So going back, I'm going to add in an extra row. So I'm going to minimize my console here, and I can say const link row equals new message action row. We can then add in a new component like before and pass in a new message button. From here, you are not allowed to set a custom ID if you are using set URL. So I could say set URL, I'll add in HTTPS warnoffkeys.com. And in order to use set URL, you have to set the style to link. Otherwise, this will not work. And the other option you need is a label. So I can say set label, and we could say visit worn off keys. So now we can add in this link row into this array here. So instead of just saying row, we can also say link row. And if I save this, my bot should automatically restart. And then I can go into Discord and I can run forward slash test. And it's now going to say, are you sure with confirm, cancel, and visit worn off keys? Clicking on this will show me where we're actually going to go. And the user can then confirm or cancel. And one thing you might notice is that this message is actually being sent to everyone in the channel. So anyone can see this message and anyone can click on these buttons. Now, depending on your use case, you may or may not want this. But in this exact example, where we might be creating a confirmation message, we definitely do not. So we can go back into our code. And in our reply, we can add in ephemeral is true. So if I save this, and we go back into Discord, I can now do forward slash test. And we now see that only we can see this message. We can click here to dismiss. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up this channel by deleting all of these messages. And now we're going to actually listen for whenever the user clicked on a message. So we can do this by creating a collector. And if you're familiar with message collectors or reaction collectors, it's a very similar concept. So I'm going to minimize my console. And I'm going to first create a filter method to ensure that the person who is reacting to the buttons is the same person who ran this command. Now, in this exact case, we are making sure that only that user can see it. But just in case we change this in the future, we want to still make sure that only the person who ran the command can interact with the messages. So I can say const filter. This is going to be a method that will return a Boolean. For now, I'll just return true. And this will give us access to a button interaction, which I will give the type of button interaction. Of course, providing a type like this is only something you would do if you're using TypeScript. Now, instead of just returning true, I want to return if the message interactions user by using dot user, if their ID is the same exact thing as the button interactions user's ID. So this will return true or false if these two strings match, effectively meaning this will return true or false if the person who clicked on the button is the same person that ran the command. So next we can actually create our collector. So const collector equals channel dot create message component collector. And this is why we imported channel into our properties right here. So going back down, we can now pass in an object where we can pass in our filter function. You can also pass in the max number of button clicks to listen to. In this case, because we are doing a confirmation where we only want to listen for yes or no, we can set the max to one. We also can add in an optional time limit of let's say 15 seconds, which you can specify by typing in 15,000 or by doing 1,000 times 15. And with this syntax, you can easily change this to any other number you want. So now that we have our collector, we want to listen for whenever something is actually collected with it. So I could say collector dot on collect, and this will have a callback here, which will give us access to an interaction, which is going to be a button interaction. And we can actually interact with this as much as we want. For example, I can say I dot reply ephemeral is true. And the content is going to be you clicked a button. Now, this step here is technically optional. This is just to show that the collect event is actually being fired whenever we click on the button. But because we have max of one, the end event is going to automatically be fired on this collector as soon as we click any button. So we want to listen for that and then add in our own logic. Like I say, collector dot on end. We can then pass in our collection. And then within here, this is what will be ran whenever the actual time expires here or whenever the user clicks on the max number of buttons here. So now I want to ensure that you know how to actually use this collection because this is going to be something that extends a JavaScript map. 
So if you have multiple buttons you're clicking on, you can go ahead and loop through these. So I could say collection dot for each. I can pass in a callback function here, and this will have one parameter. I'll call it click. And here I can add in a console log, and I can say click dot user dot ID, comma, click dot custom ID. Now the user ID is obvious, it's whoever actually clicked on the button, but the custom ID is the actual name of the button that we specified up here with custom ID as band yes or custom ID as band no. So you can then check these within this for loop. Now, if you only have a max of one, such as this case here, we can actually do this in an easier way. So because this is just console logging something, I'll keep it here, but we can go ahead and use an if statement. If collection dot first dot custom ID is exactly equal to ban yes, then we want to ban the target user. Now in this exact example, we didn't actually mention a user, but we're mostly just focusing on the button logic here and not the actual ban logic. But here's where your logic would go if they did click on the ban yes button. Now afterwards, we might want to actually edit the message and then remove the buttons and also update the text because the are you sure with the buttons will just stay there. And this is especially something you want to do if you are not using ephemeral true because anyone can click on those buttons. So now after this, I need to make this function asynchronous because we are going to use await. So I could say await message interaction dot edit reply. We can pass in the content. And at this stage, we know that someone clicked a button. So I can say an action has already been taken. And then I can say components is the empty array. If you remember, components is the array of items we passed in for all of our buttons. So now if I save this and I open up my terminal, the bot should automatically restart. I can now go back into Discord and I can do forward slash test. And here we see, are you sure? Confirm or cancel. And if I click on confirm, it's then going to edit the original interaction saying an action has already been taken. We see edited right here. And now there's no longer buttons there. Now here we see you clicked a button and this is from our actual message collector. So here we see you clicked a button right here. And of course you can remove that and also remove this entire event listener if you do not need this logic. But here's where all the logic is when it comes to checking if they actually clicked on it. And our console log is actually visible right here. Here we have the actual user ID and we have the button they clicked. So you can then use if statements within your for each loop or simple if statements like this one to see what button the users clicked. Thanks for watching the video. If you want access to video source code, as well as early access to future tutorials, consider clicking on the join button down below the video to support the channel.